Thursday, October 10th, is called to order. We're going to begin tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> the uh, first item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Charlie? I have an adjustment to the Finance Subcommittee, item 7A. We need to take a vote action on transfer of funds. Are there any other adjustments? The next item on the agenda is approval of September 12th school board minutes. We have received tonight an um, updated copy. Are there any other changes? And the school board minutes of September 12th are approved. The next item on the agenda is comments by high school and middle school reps. Um, I think we'll start with the middle school reps tonight. I know they're here. They want to come up and introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Alicia Chang. <laughs> I'm Lori Robinson. We don't have a speech or a report right now because the student council just got started and we were just here to listen and see what the first meeting's like. Great. Well, we want to welcome you and we'll look forward to your report next month. Thanks. Thanks. Um, then we have high school reps, Tina Pendleton and Megan Cunningham. Hi. Um, to start off, we had a really successful homecoming weekend, the first annual. It was on September 22nd and 23rd. Although the tailgate party was rained out, it was a not very good weather. The dance was really successful. Everybody seemed to have a really good time. Um, last week, we had an SAC retreat for all the members of the SAC um, in the high school, and we basically talked about our goals for the year. And our main goal throughout the whole year is to do a lot of volunteer work. Um, the other night was open house for parents, and like, I guess there was a really big turnout. I know my parents went, and it was really successful. They seemed to everybody had a good time and enjoyed themselves. And our progress reports were sent out last Friday. Um, next Monday, there's a freshman parents' night, and it's from 6.30 to 9 in the high school cafeteria. And it's for all parents of freshmen, and Chris Trout and Margaret Jane will be hosting it there from day one, and Mrs. Lisa will also be hosting it. Joyce. Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> That's Thanks. Good. Great. Thanks. Are there any questions from board members? Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is communications. Well, <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, did want to once again congratulate Steve Conley, the middle school teacher who was one of three finalists for Maine Teacher of the Year. Um, got a standing ovation in the cafetorium today from his peers. Um, and certainly wanted to note that we also uh, congratulate him for that standing. In your packet, I did include some items. I'll run down very quickly because you had a chance to see them. Um, noted that Bill Brewington assigned teacher at Cape Elizabeth High School, one of 12 teachers in Maine chosen as a Howard Hughes Medical Institute summer scholar. He'll be participating in a two-week program in biotechnology, or he did, excuse me, presented this past July. Um, congratulations, Bill, and we're looking forward to seeing what you are having uh, to add to the class. Also, I included a uh, notification for Actually, starting last spring, we were contacted from the Lark Society uh, for interest in a residency. The Lark Society, of course, is involved with the um, Portland String Quartet. And the, um, excuse me, I'm <laughs> struggling with my, <clears throat> my cold. Um, and in fact, we uh, now have set up um, what we are confident will be a 
a really wonderful program for visits with uh, high school classes and a community concert. And we have received over half of the funds uh, for this as a, a scholarship from the Lark Society. And the letter, letters that are enclosed give you the background information. But we are certainly grateful for that kind of support. And um, I'm not sure, looking to see if I have the dates. I have, I received the dates uh, for the um, classroom presentations. And I, if you, I will make sure we get those out to you so that if you are available that you will be able to uh, join the group. Uh, we don't have the date for the community concert, but as soon as I do, I will let you know. We also included in the packet a um, copy of an article that appeared in the Globe talking from afar, kids do science on the net. And um, page, well, last page in there, it talks about uh, sense of this year pilot project will enable students in four schools, including Cape Elizabeth High School in Maine, to link up with scientists in the biosphere two project in Arizona to learn about ecology, global climate change, and the cycles of water and carbon through Earth's atmosphere, oceans, and lands. You had heard about that grant be before when we received um, a stipend from the National Semiconductor Fund for that, going towards it. So thank you, all the people involved in all of those nice projects. Connie, under um, information, you also included the high school's list of uh, overnight field trips. Yes. And are we going to take that up at a later time? Well, this is a new policy, and I'm not uh, at this point absolutely clear how you want to handle these things. Um, your policy asked us to inform you what were the um, trips that have been going on in the past, and also your policy lays out a routine for new trips. Um, this is the, or these are the ones that the high school has, are similar to or the same as ones that they've done in the past, and you can see that some of these things haven't necessarily been pinned down, although some have. Um, and I would have to ask the board, what do you, how do you want to deal with this? I felt I needed some more information on some of them before I was ready to approve them. Um, and I guess, um, I don't know, maybe at the policy meeting we could discuss them? I thought that's what we were doing, actually. Okay. That was my I feeling. I'm, I'm not comfortable just saying we've seen them and we approve them as, as is. Well, then the, then the process that you're suggesting is that this list, which has now been given you, um, in com uh, concert with the uh, policy we have, you will then add as part of your process taking it up at the next policy subcommittee meeting. Is that what you're saying? Is that all right? Yeah, thanks. Um, the next item on the agenda is superintendent's report. Connie. And again, uh, since so much of this particular um, meeting is really trying to give you some feedback as to where the activities under this year's goals and some of the continual continuations from last year's goals. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to say a great deal about this. I have tried to keep you informed, however, of the National Science Foundation grant. This is turning out to be a, um, one of those mega groups. Uh, I want to remind people that we have a meeting this Thursday, day after tomorrow, it's a four to eight meeting. I know that people um, are going to have trouble making the various meetings that we have. Uh, for instance, I know that there's a uh, an open house that night, the sixth grade. Some of our, I think it's the sixth grade, isn't it? Thursday night, open house. Oh, Thursday night, sixth grade. Right. So I know that some of the people who are going to be at that meeting are going to have to leave a little early for that. Um, and um, it's inevitable that we have certain kinds of overlaps, that type of thing. But the year is going to go quickly. In this particular opportunity to meet with core team, uh, in this case, it's also, um, remember, we have th three different layers to this grant and from three different districts, so it gets complicated fast. We have a four-member steering committee, core team, from each district. On top of that, we have a list of 9 to 12 people, and that is a list K-12 who want to be the in-house committee in addition to the core committee. And that's a mix of parents, teachers, and administrators also. 
And um, then you've also received a notification that on um, Monday afternoon, the 30th, and on Tuesday, all day, the 31st, uh, we're going to be holding a uh, joint committee, and we've really sent out a lot of invitations to that, asked our parents as well as our school people to give us names from community members as well as people who work in various industries in the area, the universities and so forth, um, and do a visioning conference focusing strictly on the science, math, and technology aspects. I mean, this isn't a, a vision of education in the, in the absolute general sense, but it is focusing on those, those areas. So these are important kind of kickoff meetings and any way in which you can, and if you can only be part of it, please feel free to come. Any questions? I've, I've really included quite a lot of stuff in your pack, and I hope you're not feeling a little overwhelmed at this point. But it's um, uh, the Thursday meeting, I think, will be an opportunity for you, uh, for all of us, to sort this out. And the, uh, the meetings we've had so far with people getting together from the different districts have been both kind of informative but also fun. I think you'll find it the same thing. Questions? So if we're planning to attend either the 30th or the 31st, we need to do use the process for notification? Right, please. Um, okay. and, and actually, if a board member, you, if you would let uh, Connie know, we could do that for you. But uh, we do need to get back. I mean, one of the things that's going on here is that since there are three districts involved, we're not, you know, kind of the informal thing when it's all in-house, you can say, oh, let, let me know, we'll just put your name on the list. Well, other people have to be notified too, so if you could just jot that down and give it to Connie, we'll take care of it. Are any board members planning on going this Thursday from four to eight? I am. But anybody else? That will be at uh, one of the schools in South Portland, as I think the note is said. And, um, there, there is a lunch provided. I'm not sure exactly what, but. Dinner. Yeah. Or dinner, right. Okay, moving on. Update on construction project, and um, I'm going to be reporting on the building committee, so I'll try not to repeat this. Um, and Sue is here. I don't know if you, did you want you want me to just sort of update things in general, and then <laughs> she's here for questions too. This is a part of a project that is always difficult because um, you're in and you just really want everything to be finished and every nail to be in place, and. And of course it's not. Um, the rain this week, uh, or the end of last week I should say, um, identify every leak we have. And rather than, um, I, th I think it can be distressing to people when they're going through a project, even new roofs leak. There is, is not uncommon to have seams or to have places where uh, roofs are joined. Um, have problems and that's one of the reasons we've had people out after we had some problems from Thursday and uh, they're definitely working on it and at this point it's not an issue of any great alarm to us it just is an indication of where things need to be addressed um, in addition to that you can see now the parapet work going on uh, naturally we were concerned because some of that had been exposed too, but we they were able to get most of the rain out of that. We had some, some, and, and so far we haven't had any serious damage from any of these issues, but that was of course quite a test. I think the, um, generally speaking, this, the report is the same as it's been now for the last few weeks. The punch list uh, issues are upon us, and that means that we are trying to get things finished, um, painting, we're at this point um, working on refinishing floors. Did the person show up today? I mean, one of the things that can drive you crazy is that we were supposed to, all the plans were made, people moved out of the areas that we have to do some refinishing. Uh, the sander didn't show up. Anybody that's ever gone through this at home knows what happens is that um, what do you do? I mean, you just simply have to get the sander and um, so we have some frustrated folks and we'll have some frustrated folks in the building this week because once a do it's a domino effect. Once you don't get a piece done like that and you have to wait and so forth. So those kinds of things are going on. Um, but 
the bottom line is things are moving along and that the uh, gym is nearing completion anyway. And what am I leaving out? So we, you're still seeing some of that um, green stuff being sprayed around on various places on the site. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it's... Pardon me? Hydro seeding. Hydro seeding. It, it's kind of um, state of the art, I guess. It really is important to stay off that. Um, obviously, we're telling youngsters that, but we would, we would ask the community to be careful about that. Uh, that's very fragile. If we can get it to root between now and when the ground freezes, it will save us innumerable problems next spring. So we would appreciate your cooperation on that. I'd just like to add that um, because of the parapet work going on at the 1930s building, we have closed the middle school playground again. And um, we ask cooperation from the community in keeping your children off that. Um, and when it is able to be used, the orange fence will come down and the signs will come down. But in the meantime, we need to have people stay away for their own safety. Okay. Are there, any uh, are there any questions from board members? <coughs> uh, is more going to be discussed under the, the building, the building committee meeting? I'm sorry. I don't know. It depends <coughs> what your question is. <laughs> oh, since I was not able to attend that meeting, I would like to know what was approved, what was approved, what transpired, et cetera. I think under the building committee report, okay. I have the list. Connie does. Well, we discussed the. Um, some of this is just update. Um, okay, you look at that. I think so. Actually, should we do that under the building committee report? Sure, I wasn't sure. Which... Give me a second. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is school board subcommittees and reports. Finance subcommittee, Charlie. Uh, we met at 6.30 in the chamber conference room. Um, the agenda was we again signed the warrants, um, essentially reviewed a request for a half-time custodian and essentially uh, uh, approved that, um, discussed where we would find the uh, money for two staff development days, which will require a vote action after my report, um, reviewed a uh, expenditure for a um, engineering study of the pool by SMRT, um, reviewed some refunding of Chapter 2 and chap entitled to unexpended funds for the school year 93-94, and reviewed the appropriations and also reviewed a new state law relative to warrants. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Priscilla? Um, I move that we reallocate $56,100 from accounts 89,900-3210 benefits $9,000, 9010 4590-90 prime membership $9,100, 9018-3434-ADA funds $5,000, 9010-4120 system-wide substitute $8,000, 9010-4111 staff development district wide funds $11,000, 8700-1155 educational development $6,000, 8800-2155 educational development funds $5,000, 8925-3250 employee development $3,000. To I move that from those accounts to appropriate salary lines for two additional staff development days. Second that. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Uh, Charlie, any other finance business? No. Um, moving on to the school building committee report. Connie is going to. Okay. Try to read my first. <laughs> well, between the two of us, we have, I have some notes and you have some notes. Uh, we met on October 4th. Um, 
in the media center near Pond Cove. The topics that we reviewed at that time, we uh, went into more detail about the gymnasium, where it was, and so forth. Um, and actually, one of the items that uh, then got discussed um, as an additional cost area for, dis uh, for discussion, number one, existing wood floor for refinishing. We did have a bid uh, at 11500 not only to do the gym floor, but also the um, floors in the Allied Arts Wing of the middle school that needed to be refinished. And that bid was voted on and accepted. Um, I do hope the Sanders shows up. Um, probably the issue that hadn't been discussed before, in any detail at least, was the issue of bleacher repairs. Anybody who's been in the middle school knows that those bleachers have been looking um, somewhat the worse for wear, and of course they, they're the original bleachers. Um, and with all the work that's been going on, naturally it's important for us to look at them. Uh, the difficulty with bleacher repair is that it's not just something you can hire a contractor to come in and, and quickly fix. They're, the uh, Hussey Manufacturing Company is the official standard bleacher company, and um, since there are a lot of bleachers and only a few people who do this work, it takes a while, and we've been on the list. Um, I don't think the gentleman has come yet, right, Scott? Uh, yes, he was here Friday. Oh, he was here Friday, okay. And uh, they'll be doing a follow-up visit and uh, also be giving us a cost analysis of what it's going to take to look at the bleachers. Fine. We are sure that we have some repairs. I mean, we, we can see that, that's visual. Bleachers can be repaired. They don't have to necessarily be torn out, and uh, which is fortunate because putting that amount of bleachers in was something that this project never anticipated doing. Simply don't have that kind of capacity in our budget at all. We have a figure here of an approximation of 25,000 for repairs, um, the best we could do at the time, and we discussed that with the committee um, agreeing that it needs to be done. This is a safety factor, obviously. We don't want to be putting them back there without checking them. But we don't have a figure, didn't have a figure the other night, and yet don't yet have the figure, but at least we're moving on. Um, there was also some discussion of uh, something called the capital reconstruction. This isn't Washington that we're talking about here. It's the uh, um, capital is the heading on those pillars that are out there in front of the 30s building, um, the Latin root head is capital or anyway. That's uh, been determined that the best way to deal with that is not just to try to repair the wood, but to actually replace them with a um, fiberglass. fiberglass. Uh, we take the wood and make a mold of it and then fiberglass would be poured into it so they'd look absolutely identical, and these fiberglass would become the capital, these fiberglass molds, and you would never see a difference. Right. But it would stand up. And um, this, after some discussion, it was pretty clear that was certainly the best solution <clears throat> under the circumstances. Um, there was some discussion about getting a middle school ball field backstops, um, and that has been accomplished. Um, one item I we haven't didn't bring closure to was a sound system in the cafetorium. I know that Scott has continued to do some research with that, but we haven't made any final decision on exactly what that would be. We're still researching what would be an appropriate um, system. Those are the, the major issues that had not really a decision had not been made on before. There was update on the condition of um, the parapet repairs. Uh, there is some concern, depending on how the weather goes, whether all of this material can be you know, can be finished, um, the repointing of the bricks and so forth. And so we discussed some possible um, funds for winter conditions. That is some protection for whatever part of the building can't be done because weather will become a factor here before too long. And um, there's another small figure for what, what's being called 1930s additional rot. Um, but that is talking about pieces of wood on, in the outer, outer facing, the kinds of things that you can see. Uh, some pieces 
have, um, are certainly okay and others and they they have found some others so they're putting down another small sum to cover that all in all when you add everything up the contingency is pretty well gone um, but fortunately things have we've been prudent all along and it seems as if we're going to have enough to pay our bills but it doesn't look like there's going to be anything left over Connie I might add we also approved um, getting a firm figure I can't remember what up to to do the upholstery on the benches oh, yeah. in the med both media centers there was a, a figure for upholstery in the movable furnishing committee's budget that was had much more upholstery than just that and they were going to go back and find out what it is to just do the benches that are built in in the media centers that need them and that was something the building committee felt that yes they wanted to do um, and we also um, set a date to reconvene the uh, movable furnishings committee to um, look at a few sort of straggling issues which had to do with some of the furniture that came in that we might want to change on our specs for the future, what exactly is there that we're missing, um, and I think that's set for Monday the 30th, 30th at 12 noon at the Pond Cove Media Center, I think. Um, and um, we were going to also discuss the sound system and those kind of things at that point. I should note that the new cafetorium furniture is in. It makes a big difference in our ability to clean that uh, room readily. Um, and I, I also think it looks good in, uh, as we use it and people get the, the public that's used to it there. Really, um, I think attractive pieces of furniture, hopefully useful too. Um, computer, computer labs. I know I talked to Andrew Lomick McNair today, and the uh, Fonco computer lab is moving right along. I understand, as is the middle school. They're ready for tomorrow. Hmm? They're ready for tomorrow. Oh, good, <clears throat> excellent. Those are all items we talked about too. Did I cover it all? Yeah, Charlie has a I have a question of Nancy Hutton. Did you find all your missing chairs? No. Hmm. Still missing 27. Hmm. Hmm. We, we also discussed signage and that the uh, movable furnishings committee would take up the um, what kind of signage we were going to then add. Um, I think Dan was knew we were going to do room numbers and things, but beyond that, someone needed to, we needed to pursue that. Yeah, um, the sign is, for instance, people were raising such issues as when you walk into these buildings now, uh, should there be some indication where the first grade wing and the second grade or the fifth grade or the sixth grade or what have you, um, that again will be something that this committee will be looking at. Yeah. Between the two of, of us, we think we got most of it. Does this include the high school computer lab? Any report on that? I'm sorry? The high school computer lab, do we know where we stand there? At the moment, I do not know. How are we coming with the high school computer lab? The wiring still hasn't been completed. And once that's there, you know, we're ready to go. So we need to have just a lot of this going to be So we're waiting for a lot of the, the duct working and the wiring to be taken care of. Okay. Okay. That's it. The next building committee meeting was set for. Um, Thursday, November 9th at 7 p.m. at the middle school library. Uh, the next uh, report is the technology committee. And the technology committee meets the 15th, so we haven't met since our last meeting. Thank you, Charlie. And then policy committee, Anne. All right, well, everybody got this enormous packet. And I apologize um, for that. I also apologize for the fact that um, in, in one of our first reading policies here, it's a little hard to tell where the Westbrook policy that we're using as a first reading ends and the other one begins. So we'll clarify that when we go through the first readings if anybody needs to, though I assume that somebody might have called me if they had trouble figuring it out. But um, we last met on September 28th and um, we were joined at our meeting by the Pond Cove principals um, for an update on the placement procedures and um, how the new kindergarten screening uh, process uh, was going. And um, 
I'm actually very happy to report that um, last year, out of in, in placing over 650 kids, there were only 25 appeals by parents of placement decisions, which if anybody's had kids in the system for a while knows that that's uh, that we've vastly improved that process. So that process does appear to be um, working very well. Um, there were a couple places where we thought there might need to still be some revisions, but those are being worked worked on in the building. And the kindergarten screening um, apparently went quite well. Also, um, the teachers still uh, would like to have a little more input with the incoming kids, and, and we're working on that. Um, but there was only only one one change that had to be made um, among the students in the, in the first week of school, and I think that's speaks very well um, for, for the process working. Um, we discussed um, the possibility of adopting a school board policy on reading instruction, and we basically just batted that idea around and decided we, we would go ahead and pursue it. Um, we agreed that such a policy um, would be a general philosophy statement rather than uh, getting into you know, micromanaging the schools as far as methodologies. Um, the intent would be to support teachers and administrators in continuing to improve reading instruction and developing grade level goals. Um, it would also address reading system-wide. Um, it would be developed with input from teachers. Um, would include a request for an annual report to the school board on reading programs and student assessment and would recognize and support the need for continuing staff development on reading instruction. So that's just in the extreme preliminary um, state right now. Um, we'll be working on that. And one, one last thing that wasn't in here is we did approve a um, field hockey booster club trip, which I believe is, is it this week? Oh, you went, la it was last week, um, to see the, the United States team, now I've I don't have it in front of me, play who? Some Ireland. Ireland. Um, did it go well? Very well. Good? Great. Um, so we will be d taking up several first readings a little later in the meeting, and the next, our next meeting is going to be October 25th, 8.30 to 10.30 in the council chamber um, conference room. Thank you, Ann. Sure. Any questions? <clears throat> uh, next item on the agenda is unfinished business, school board goals. Well, I gave you a, quite a packet because at our last meeting in September when you adopted your goals, you also asked me to come back with, with uh, information on specific charges, meeting dates, and general information, and that's pretty much, I think, pretty much in here, um, rather than go through all of this um, blow by blow, I, I think it would be important just to point out a, a couple of things that um, most of these items now have are underway or have some specific activity going in process. <coughs> uh, mission statement, for instance, we already, we've sent out notices asking both teachers and parents to sign up. Uh, for two focus groups um, each, two parent groups, two teacher groups. Um, those are pretty well firmed up at this point, although I haven't yet finished that process, but I, I have all the names and we're just really trying to find the appropriate dates. I've already mentioned the, some meetings coming up with the uh, science grant and you had some uh, minutes. I want to point out that through no fault of his own, Steve Conley's name got left off one of those lists. Um, he was sick when, the, when that particular meeting came up, and um, I've assured him that he is on the list, very much so. Uh, we've had one meeting of the Research Student Committee, which, and I included some minutes to give you some idea of the discussion. Um, I really think this one is going to, um, and, and all of us who were at that meeting said, gee, this is really actually going to be fun. <laughs> some of the <coughs> some committees. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, kind of fall, things sort of fall into place uh, right off, and I think about where we are on this one. And again, as I point out in the uh, introduction to those minutes, this isn't something that just all of a sudden came up. We've been really working towards this moment now for, I think, three years. And I hope you had a chance to at least look at the um, 
publication from Horace, the Coalition of Essential Schools that we subscribe to, um, then yes, we do keep ties with the Coalition of Essential Schools. It's sort of one of those unfinished issues out there. I, I'd like to remind people that we, we definitely um, are interested in what they have to say. I thought it was an excellent summary of where library research uh, ought to be heading given the information age, and I hope you've had a chance to look at it. Um, our librarians have already started assembling. They had some of the information that's in the bibliography at the end, and they're assembling some more. So um, that definitely came at just the right time for us. <coughs> we mentioned a little bit about staff development um, already. We did have a, a staff development day today, workshop day, and uh, all staff met in cross grade groups at um, for an hour, a little better than an hour at noontime today in the in the new cafeteria. And the committee will be meeting to compile some of that information so that we can go forward with um, guidance as to what will be the best ways to schedule our new days. And I think that's pretty much it. Be happy to answer questions. Or Are there any questions for Connie? Anne? It's not really a question, just a comment. Um, I, I love these, the mi minutes of the research um, group. I would just hope that you would add to your kind of overriding goals something again about um, the, the ethics issue. Um, oh, yeah. I think that needs to be, I think we need to address that as, a, as one issue for the whole school department, but I think that's an important place to add that in, cheating and all, with all the yeah, new technology. I, I mean, I'm sure especially. we talked about it, and I don't know why it didn't show up there. I just must have left it out. But anyway, it is an issue, of course, that we, it's in our technology grant or some yeah. reference. Well, we need, I think we need it to show up in a lot of places. Those two are probably the two prime ones. <clears throat> um, are there other questions? We talked. Um, Proceeding this at the Finance Committee meeting about board members and which committees they would be officially the school board reps for, and I forgot to ask for the science grant who they would be, so anybody who wants to volunteer would be great. But um, Carlin Gale expressed interest in the research strand. Um, Ann and I are doing the staff development. Carlin and Keith are doing the arts committee. Um, Charlie continues on with technology. Um, and the mission statement and the science grant we need to. Keith is on technology also. Keith is on technology too, thanks. I would like to be on the science grant. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> um, and, um, but anyway, we will go there and all board members will be informed of all meetings and invited to attend any, but um, we would count on our reps to really keep us informed. And thank you, Connie, for these wonderful notebooks to keep us organized. <laughs> well, it was becoming clear to me that little organization is going to be needed because some of these won't generate as much paper, but the science grant is definitely going to generate a lot of paper. So, And I suspect they'll all, from time to time, there'll be reference documents of one kind or another, and you need a place to keep track of it. Right. Um, moving on to new business. The first item on the agenda is nominations for athletic coaching positions for fall 95-96. And you have um, the list in front of you. On one side you have a list of names. On the back side you have um, some additional information. So what I will do is read the front side as the nominations. Boys Varsity Basketball, Jim Ray. Boys JV Basketball, Kurt McGandless. Boys Freshman Basketball, Tom Robinson. Girls Varsity Basketball, Dan Deniso. Girls JV Basketball, Scott Shea. Boys Swimming, Carrie Curtis. Girls Swimming, Carrie Curtis. Assistant Swimming, split between three people. Ben Raymond, Tim Began, and J.B. Whipple. Varsity Ice Hockey, Brendan Hickey. And Assistant Ice Hockey, Tim Holden and Charlie Carroll. Are there any questions? I would like to, by the way, take this opportunity to comment that uh, Keith Weatherby, our athletic director, has had a serious operation, but um, he's back on his feet and was in, I know, for part of the day today, right? So 
we certainly wish him well. And he should also be cautioned to take care of himself, I think. Right? Okay. We'll expect you to do that, right? <laughs> um, okay, that's the list for. Carla has, has a question? Yeah, I had a, a very minor question. Is there no um, girls freshman basketball? Is that a numbers thing? Are there just less girls? Or are they incorporated in the JV? Just, the just a simple yeah, numbers thing. Just a numbers okay. thing. And, and it, we've had we had a freshman team about five or six years ago, uh -huh. but the numbers that generate that. I think with girls swimming, the numbers of athletes it, it disperses itself a little better than in uh -huh. say boys basketball and swimming. But if they're um, freshman girls that want to play, they play JV. Right. Okay. Similar to the issue with with girls freshman soccer, there isn't a freshman girls league per se. That then you run into a scheduling issue too, as far as. Uh, getting teams to play us at a freshman level, and really the numbers haven't substantiated the need at this point. So. Are there any other questions? I guess just a comment that I found the additional information helpful. Yeah, that's what we've been asking for, it's great. So noted. I'd entertain a motion. Anne? I move that we accept the 1995-96 winter coaches as read. Is there a second? Yeah. yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Okay. Next item is co curricular positions for 95 96. And that would be um, middle school drama. You may recall last year um, was part of the co curricular discussion. Middle school took some of the points that it had and redistributed them <laughs> because we now will have the opportunity to have some drama. And so uh, the coach will be nominated Stephen Price. Co advisors to the sophomore class Kurt McCandless and Scott Shea. Any questions? Entertain a motion. Anne? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Gail. Yeah. I move that we. Um, Point Stephen Price for the middle school drama and Kurt McCandless and Scott Shea for as co advisors to the sophomore class. 95, Is there a second? Second. Keith. Any defer to the discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Yeah. Uh, next item is policies, first reading. Anne? Can I just ask one quick yeah. question that I thought of, of, of Nancy Hutton actually seeing the drama just? reminded me. The kids seem to be making a lot of noise about wanting a yearbook back. Is that being is that being explored at all at the middle school? Oh, oh yes. You, in the middle school we like to explore it in many different ways so we are exploring it. Good. One of the things that we've been talking with them about that it wasn't a money issue as much as a student commitment issue and our students get really excited about this time of year when it's time to put it together, all the pictures have been taken and everything. Uh, for the last few years, teachers have been doing that. So we're working with them to see about student commitment. I think we will probably have one, but we're still working on it. Okay. You, you might also try getting some parent volunteers. I, for one, would be happy to help out with that. Well, you know, and we do have two fifth graders who are looking for advisors um, to do, and I will be sure I'm having lunch with them. We have a weekly lunch, and I will be sure to share that information with them on Thursday. So thank you very much. Oh, boy. That was dumb, wasn't it? <laughs> Moving on to uh, first readings of policies. We have several. We have um, file EEAEAA. <laughs> Drug and alcohol testing of bus drivers, um, a policy and administrative guidelines. Um, we, as I said in, in the notes, we have, um, we have Westbrooks here to look at because they've already been looked at by, by our law firm. Um, they're <coughs> almost identical to, to what um, Scott Poulin had been, had been working on. Um, you have both sets in here. I know I read through both of them. I assume other policy <laughs> committee members did. Um, but the one that we're officially looking at and we would make any changes to would be the Westbrook policy. So did anybody have any questions, comments? 
Go ahead, Carla. Um, I had a number, actually. Maybe I'll just say them all and then. Scott is here, so he can answer okay. these questions. <laughs> um, I just wanted some of the background as to why when they talk about the um, alcohol concentration, it says 0.02 or greater instead of zero. I didn't understand why it just wasn't zero. Okay, and um, there was one thing in the uh, Westbrook policy where it mentions no consumption of alcohol eight hours before going on duty and in our draft. No, I think Westbrook was four hours and we changed it to eight hours or was it the other way around? Here I have to find it. I think it's eight hours. In the I think right. It okay, one of them only said four hours and one of them said eight hours. So I wanted to point out that I thought the eight hours was preferable. And then we had a change in our draft as to the number of students in a vehicle, 10 as opposed to 16. And I was wondering if that had to do with a specific count is what is our smallest bus count, I guess. Is well, there's two different licenses for bus drivers. There's okay. a P endorsement and there's a Y endorsement. A P endorsement will cover 15 passengers and down. A Y endorsement covers 15 and up. Um, so that's where the difference is in the two, uh, the two pieces. Um, my preference would be 10 or more passengers, mm -hmm. okay? That, that bypasses the community services van for the people that are driving that, but it also covers the minivans and uh, the P endorsement. But shouldn't it, I mean, from my point of view, mm -hmm. if you have five kids in a vehicle being transported by the school, we have as much responsibility as if we have 10 kids. Well, it also has to do with what the law outlines. I mean, the law specifically outlines um, what classification of people are to be tested. Uh -huh. uh, in license. So I think it's more the classification of the law than it is for our own personal preference. Okay. And I was also a little uncomfortable in the um, substances tested for paragraph that it specifically mentioned, I know it's four or five drugs. And I noticed later on it did cover prescription drugs, but I wondered mm -hmm. if there was a way to not be so specific or to add a line that would somehow include other drugs or substances? Well, I think one of the, uh, first off, what you need to understand is this, uh, th this is really no secret, this whole layout. I mean, this was given to all school departments in, a, uh, in the month of uh, uh, August up in Augusta at a main pupil transportation conference. So, I mean, that's why you see so much similarity in them. Okay. The, um, on the prescription drugs, you'll see that it's very clearly spelled out, um, getting a, uh, written statement from a doctor that it's not going to impair the driving. Um, so I mean, it's uh, I guess it's a controlled substance and non-controlled substance, uh, uh -huh. and that's why they're spelled out as two separate paragraphs there. And okay. um, obviously, uh, the driver's responsibility is to provide us with uh, written assurance that whatever medication they're on isn't going to affect their driving from a doctor. Okay. So, so would you would recommend then that we change? this policy to say 10 or more I would passengers. change it 10 or more passengers. And the other, uh, the other thing that uh, the difference between the Westbrook policy and um, the policy um, that we were working on is you'll find out that there's probably one of the things we need to look at in this policy is a, a little bit more clear definition, definition of who the program administrator is, where the uh, information um, can be received from the uh, from those employees that feel they may have an alcohol or drug problem and are looking for referral services. Mm -hmm. That's something we may want to spell out a little bit more clearly in our policy. That's all I had for now. I think the context of this, um, and I'm thinking also for perhaps people who might be just watching this, uh, this is not something that, that the Cape Elizabeth School Board um, is just getting around to doing. We have drug and alcohol policies that are in some respects actually read a little stricter than this one. Um, this is based on federal and state legislation. We are required, um, as Scott said, anybody who, who drives a school bus, and that's not the, the minivan, but the school bus, must have a certain license. And federal law requires these drug and alcohol tests um, along the lines that you see here. We don't have any control over 99% of what's actually here. This is the law. Um, one of the issues, for instance, uh, we have in our drug and alcohol policy, if somebody were to present themselves under the influence as a bus driver, it has been our, unfortunately, uh, this has not happened, 
very fortunately that's never happened uh, here. But the, um, it would certainly be my understanding that that's grounds for dismissal. However, the federal statutes require us to remove the person, put them in non-sensitive um, uh, activities, or whatever the phrase is in here, um, and also uh, they have a period of time to go for treatment and, in fact, uh, then be retested. And um, my a preliminary conversation with other superintendents and with some authorities on this is that we're not allowed to. This supersedes our employee policy that actually would give, I would think, me the right to say to somebody, uh-uh, out of here. And so this, we're still kind of moving through this to clarify. That's one of the reasons why lawyers are reviewing these documents almost district by district because some of these things don't totally add up to us. At any rate, the point is, is that this is a random testing policy. Random testing is one of those sensitive issues that is surrounded with all kinds of confidentiality as well as um, fairness guidelines and care of the provider. Uh, we will be joining along with other school districts in the area, uh, a kind of pool of people who uh, our drivers will go with other drivers in, a, in, this, in this random sample pool. We must follow absolutely the guidelines as they are laid out here. We, we cannot just sort of arbitrarily do any of this ourselves. The, any testing that is done must be done, and I, I, I know this is gonna sound, it's gonna sound funny, but looking at the written, it's not so bad, by a BAT, which is a BAT, uh, but that means the, um, the uh, breath technician. You can't, we can't give any of those tests ourselves. We have to have uh, a routine where we take people and so on and so forth. This is um, all part of a national federal and state trend. So, so picking up pieces of this, just put this in the context that we are now um, coming into compliance as all school districts must do. And naturally we want to be um, assure all of our students and their, their parents. Uh, and I can certainly speak for the drivers we have. This is not an issue that, that has ever presented itself. Um, nevertheless, we're now part of a larger picture and, and we'll work it through. And, and by the time we have a second reading of this, we'll have some of those details pinned down. But that's basically what's going on here. I just wanted to add just a couple more pieces to that. That um, uh, one of the things that might be helpful is there are, in the packet that you have, there's 11 points um, that were distributed, and those are kind of helpful in reviewing this policy. And the other thing is, is that we're also um, uh, We've had some conversations with Mike McGovern, our town manager, and uh, we're trying to work in, along with the one town concept that we've been, been utilizing, is the police department and public works in this whole, uh, you know, drug testing policy. So, it's my understanding that this is legislation that uh, came about as a result of some terrible accidents in public transportation that um, appeared to involve um, operators of Amtrak or I forget the exact uh, uh, accidents you may recall um, who were under the influence. And this was an example of federal legislation that, that came about and it's gradually sifting its way through various layers and now it's very fast. I had a question and um, we talk about the training for supervisors and um, that the program administrator has the authority to determine whether reasonable suspicion exists to require a driver to undergo a test. If our program administrator is, let's say, Scott in the business office, I wouldn't think he would have eyeball contact with bus drivers before they went out and things. And would we train somebody else who does see the drivers before they go out if, if we need that trained person to, to That was fine with me. I just felt that somebody should be trained in the signs. It talks about a, a you know, there are certainly determinable signs that, um, and the, and you as the business manager wouldn't see those bus drivers eye to eye. Yeah, I, I 
and then it talks about going into this large pool of the state with our drivers. What is your, what numbers are we talking, and how often would one of our drivers randomly come up? I mean, Huh. Um, the only district in the area that uh, school district that has enough bus drivers over 50 um, and is already going through this process is, is SAD 6 and um, Frank McDermott told a meeting of superintendents that in since January when they had to uh, get into this process they've had um, their a, one of their employees has come up uh, twice it also happened to be the same person, which was one of those things, surely absolutely random. Um, but that gives you some idea. What it is. And as more districts get in, into this particular pool, that may in fact, uh, that, those numbers may actually go down. But we simply, I mean, since it is so random, we don't know. It might be four or five from one, one place and years before, a couple of years before you get you catch up on the other. I don't know exactly how they look. We'll just have to get into it. I thought it looked good um, as we go through it. Obviously, all the Westbrook references need to be changed to Cape Elizabeth and be appropriate. Does anybody else have anything? So the policy subcommittee's recommendation is more the Westbrook policy or the one just because the the wording of this one has already gone um, through the attorneys just to save you know save save that step if we can obviously we do, we would have to change um, you know the references to to Cape Elizabeth but I don't think other than that there would be the any numbers. substantive changes that would require us to have it reviewed again Well, for a second reading, um, do people feel comfortable with coming back with 10 or more passengers, as Scott suggested? And then we would just change all the references to department or to Westbrook to Cape Elizabeth School Department and change the program administrator to the business manager of the Cape Elizabeth School Department. Yeah, I just want to be clear that we will, t we will train some other people in the warning. I'm not sure that it might not necessarily to needs to be part of the yeah. regulation per se. Yeah. Um, but something that we could just do. Although yeah. under seven it says, the program administrator has the authority to determine whether reasonable suspicion exists to require a driver to undergo a test. We might want to say the program administrator or any other trained department. Um, I, th I think ultimately though it okay. comes back to he would have to be the one to make the decision. He may have someone who alerts, is that that, w that would be my understanding, that you would always have to be the one who <coughs> made the determination that person had to be tested and accompany them. You have to be able to, if you suspect an employee, as a, let's say you're the program administrator, you sus suspect the employee of alcohol abuse, um, you've got to be able to physically take that person, find a substitute for them right at that moment, physically take them to a testing center, and, and provide a sample. Um, so you need somebody to go with that person. You just don't want to say, you know, mm -hmm. go get a sample taken and, and allow them to go on their own. Um, mm -hmm. You know, somebody has to be designated to physically take that person from point A to point B. Um, so that's, that's the whole point of the program administrator um, and make sure that the process is followed step by step by step. So I think no matter what, he would have to be alerted that there was an issue by someone who would be trained in the signs, but he would be. And that, and that was one of my, that was one of my concerns that I mentioned about the previous policy. It does not spell out what happens, you know, from point A to point B. In other words, um, and I think in the policy subcommittee, you need to determine the program administrator who we're going to be using because at that point you've got to determine what is going to happen. Suspect, uh, random sample, take the person from point A to point B. Uh, you know, have the sample taken. That, that isn't spelled out in the Westbrook policy, so I think that's something we need to work on as well. Okay. All right, moving on to, I'm, I'm to go there now. 
um, filed KJR addendum to facilities use administrative guidelines. Um, actually, on the morning of the of our meeting, uh, re we received a memo um, from Katie Lisa and the quick response team at the high school who had met to review um, the response to the deaths of the two students um, last year. And I don't know if it would be useful for me to read this memo at this point so that people know what we're talking about here or? Sure. Okay. What they're, at, what they're asking for is, is to not use the, the schools for funerals in the future. Um, on September 26, 1995, the quick response team met at the high school to review the events of the previous school year relative to the deaths of two students. We also focused on refining the services of the team and defining the roles that various staff members would perform in future critical situations. A significant recommendation for school board consideration is that school buildings no longer be the site of funerals. The team felt unanimously that such rituals be returned to funeral homes, churches, or synagogues. The needs for, transition, for traditions and rituals belong clearly to institutions other than schools. Feedback from students, parents, and staff further illustrate the residual impact of shifting the site of grieving community members to this institution rather than the spiritual or religious setting. The role of each institution to function separately is of significant merit and value. We fully appreciate the emotional time in which such a request might be initiated and feel that a policy adopted at a non-crisis time is in the best interest of our students, staff, and community. Parents, families, and the community are constantly challenged to redefine and refine the roles of various institutions, and we believe policy adoption on this ma matter may help us refocus. Um, and the policy committee did discuss this and agreed um, that this, it would be appropriate. We also thought um, that in light of, of the history that we might just attach this as an addendum to our existing policy in case a community member ever had a question as to why the change. Charlie? Are we talking about attaching this memo to, I think that's inappropriate. I think you really need to just spell out that, that the school facilities will not be used for funerals. Is, is that in our policy manual or does that go to community in the services? No, it's an administrative guideline under facilities, and I think we just need to add and append them that the facilities will not be used for funerals. I think I just think it's inappropriate to add this letter as a as a guideline. Maybe we could keep the letter on file and keep it, it on file somewhere. It. Yeah. It just personalizes it too much, and this shouldn't be a personalized. Well, the the you know the problem is at the moment it is. Um, it no, is, but it is a, hopefully it no. It's a personalized situation, but I'm talking about this memo. It personalizes it to a specific person making the recommendation. Oh, I see. What That's you're my saying. point. And, it, and, and an administrative guideline should be a blanket right. guideline. This was m mostly as intended as a backup document so that if this came up, we would have something that explained out of the heat of the mm -hmm. moment why this, why this policy was in place. Um, but if we kept it in a file somewhere in case It'll somebody in wanted to package. see it. That is kept. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as it's documented it. somewhere the reason why we we acted on because these things get lost down down the road and it might be yeah. we've had that experience before in the policy committee of not being able to figure out where a, where a decision was made or why way you know actually not in the, that distant past and what we've been doing in recent years with some of the policies is putting them in the back of the administrate of the superintendent's policy book right and it, it explains it um, some of these are in Background. the back of the policy. Yeah. Not in everyone's, but in the superintendent's, as well as board package backups. Well, that would, that would be fine, but then we have to ask Sue to um, change what she gives to the community, right? As far as well, it, uses? It was, you know, essentially changing a policy. Right. And I think it needs to be spelled out. I don't mean to create more work, but I, this is too personal a letter to be attached as an administrative guideline. That's fine. Does that mean Sue has to redo the <clears throat> whole form? <laughs> <laughs> Should the policy committee do the wording of an addendum? 
I mean, should that be for suited? Well, if, if we're not if we're not going to use the memo, then I don't see why we can't just say that we're not going to use the facilities for funerals without spelling out why in mm -hmm. in the policy itself. So it's a matter of just inserting a sentence somewhere. Yeah. But does that become um, first reading again? I we probably so. do need well, the to, want to is just there. look at it again. Yeah. So we will bring back at the next um, meeting that policy with a sentence added in as a change. Yeah. Sorry. So did you have any comment? Um, I don't, we don't have um, specific okay uses and those that are inappropriate as part of the policy. So if someone requested it, we would defer to the school board policy that says it is inappropriate for certain activities. I mean, we don't have things listed as one of the set activities. So we could have well, a have separate policy. policy that says... We would just say that that is not appropriate. How do you wean out things then? What if, I mean, so what if some group wanted to do something inappropriate? How would we weed that out? <laughs> what if someone. <laughs> no, really, I mean, well, well like a con religious convention. Oh. No, well, I, well. Connie? Connie. Well, yeah, what about weddings? Connie. Connie. <laughs> <laughs> there are some uh, case law issues. Um, for instance, public buildings for religious purposes, generally speaking, um, as long as nobody's forced to attend them, they may be used for religious purposes. I mean, th this is a piece of law that kind of gets kicked around back and forth. There have been case law on both sides of that particular issue. Uh, so this is not necessarily a simple cut and dried issue. For instance, could the, is it appropriate for the school buildings to be used for weddings? Um, I don't think anybody in my time has ever thought that was a particularly <laughs> place great place to have a wedding. But um, I mean, you know, while we're thinking about the possibilities, um, this issue does raise both from a limiting point of view and from an enabling point of view uh, the use of public property. So I, it sounds to me like I'm going to have to do a little research and I'll, I'll try to get back to the. Um, uh, the policy subcommittee on that one. I don't think we need to make it unduly burdensome or um, obviously in this particular case, the memo is specific about an issue that is very unusual, might well never happen again, but in case it is, the uh, obviously it is the intent of school people to uh, advise the board that it would be helpful if there was some kind of guidance, whether it ought to be a policy issue, whether that ought to be an administrative issue, residing almost primarily in the superintendent's uh, office, um, I'd have to really do a little research and think about it, because we don't really want to make this burdensome. Um, Maybe you should just talk to our attorney about yeah. what the best way to handle I this. I can hear that in this issue. I will do that. That was my suggestion. Let's defer to counsel. I've used that in the past. <laughs> Why, why spend a lot of time and then have, have counsel tell us that this, this is not legal, it's not inappropriate? So why not just defer the, the question? Well, the point, facilities. But, but I think we're, we're kind of losing the intent of no, the understand. memo. And that was, you know, just guidance for them as far as what would be good for them. Um, I, you know, regardless of whether there was ever a legal challenge in the future to our ability to do that, I mean, I, I do think it, it's something that we were making a statement, we would stand behind that. We could see the reason behind it. Um, we've kind of gotten past that step now, so. I, I will try to frame the issue for you. Sue has a Sue. Um, under our guidelines, um, it would be for non-school use if someone wanted to use it for, say, a funeral. And up until this point, we really haven't um, enforced what 
is the mandate of the policy. You have to have your own insurance because it's a non-school function. Um, would you, you would have to pay for um, not only rental of the building, but also custodial services. And in the past, it has just been um, accepted or agreed upon by the board to go ahead and use the facility as a site. And if we were to follow the use of facility guidelines, which we haven't done in any of these cases, um, I don't think it will become an issue. But I'm not sure, given um, the opportunity for them to follow all of the mandates of the guideline, whether or not we could reject their request right. either. So I think that's the question we and, need to yeah, have answered. And, and the point is we have staff members who are saying that it would be better if we did for other reasons not to do with using the facilities per se. So I guess we need to need to do some research. Follow it. Okay. Follow it a while longer. That's what first readings are for. <laughs> Um, the next one is filed GDO, Evaluation of Support Staff. And this, this is a new policy. This has been something that I know Charlie has <laughs> wanted to see for a long time. And um, there was a committee um, that was formed this winter. Scott helped me. You were on the committee, and it, I think Nancy Hutton was on it, and a secretary to, um, to work out. Uh, this employee evaluation form that's in here, which we are not approving, it's, it's there for your information. Um, but this, this short little policy would be in our policy book, backed up by the administrative guidelines, GDOR. Questions, comments? Short, sweet, and to the point. I just had a, a couple <laughs> of questions, Anne. Um, why don't we define the support staff in the policy as opposed to the administrative guideline? Um, because we think we would be changing them sometimes? They could, you know, it, it could change. It's really not a policy issue. The policy, you know, the issue is framed here. We think it's important for people's development and for the school department to be evaluated. That's the school department. Yeah, I mean, the school board view that as far as the nitty gritty things, those are really for the people who have to administrate the evaluations. It's not I, really a I guess if I just saw the policy plan, I wouldn't be sure what support staff was, and I needed that administrative guideline to right. define that, who they were. And I, my comment was I would like to see the definition of support staff as, as you gave in number one um, in the policy, um, just because I almost felt it was almost too vague. Um, and having gone through so many policies that were so vague, um, it, it is hard sometimes to recall back five years from now what we meant by. No, I know, but don't we usually in those cases back them up with the administrative guidelines right with the policy? So that we've got it. I mean, it's not our policy, but it fle fleshes it out. Mm -hmm. I think we get into trouble of then having to, uh, policies that we have to continually go back and review to make sure they still include the right people and all that, all that kind of thing. I think it's easier if it's an administrative guideline and the person who is administering it has to keep on top of that. But. And my only other comment was to add um, the prime, in the second paragraph, the primary purpose of, um, I was going to say support staff <coughs> evaluation is the growth of the individual staff members just because personnel again seemed too vague and that we were definitely dealing with the support staff in this policy. Um, I, I won't say that I actually wrote this policy. I did actually lift it from <laughs> something we got from the MSMA. That's, that's certainly fine with me. This was part of it, believe it or not, I think it was two pages, um, a two-page policy and this was really um, the crux of it. So I want to change it to support staff evaluation. Anybody else? All right, well, we'll see some of these in some form or another in our next meeting. Um, seeing no other business, I would like to announce that the next meeting of the Finance Subcommittee is Tuesday, November 14th at 6.30 in the Council Chambers Conference Room, followed by the regular school board meeting. 
the school board and town council will have a joint workshop on Monday, October 23rd, beginning at 6 o'clock in the town hall cafeteria. The school board policy subcommittee meeting will be Wednesday, October 25th at 8.30 in the council chambers conference room and the next school building committee meeting on Thursday, November 9th at 7 p.m. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? 7-0. Someone might still be awake. We also had a huge amount of